the hidden power of four companies. Tim Cook of Apple, Sundar Pichai of Google, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, the President of the United States. When we think of who controls the world, these names come to mind. But while these people have significant influence over our lives, it is only four companies that secretly control the world, and a handful of people within them have the power to change your life for better or worse without you realizing what is happening. Their power is not limited to the United States. These companies own the vast majority of publicly traded companies in Europe and operate worldwide. But how can four companies control so much wealth? You might think it's an exaggeration, but it's true. And the information is available just by looking it up. From stores like Walmart and Home Depot, to transportation companies like GMC and Boeing, from pharmaceutical companies like Merck, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, to media giants like Disney, Viacom, News Corp, NBC, CBS, Time Warner, and AT&T. All of these influence the banking system and intervene in all the decisions made by financial giants like Bank of America, JPM Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup. In the United States, the Federal Reserve has board members representing these four investment companies. Global financial institutions like the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank are influenced by these companies. So, who exactly are they? Before answering while researching this topic, I was bombarded with a lot of data. The money they control, the businesses they invest in. It's all overwhelming and difficult to explain in a sink. The first on the list is BlackRock. It was founded during the Great Depression by Larry Fink and is a fiduciary meaning someone has entrusted them to act in their best financial interest. BlackRock mainly does this through investment funds, a set of assets that invest in stocks, bonds, and other securities. It has 70 offices in 30 countries and holds $10 trillion in assets. Today, the company is worth $20 trillion, which is half of the annual gross domestic product of the United States. That is the measure of the value created by a country through the production of goods and services. The other three companies are Vanguard, State Street, and Fidelity Investments. Vanguard manages $7.6 trillion in assets and is the world's largest mutual fund issuer. At the end of the year, it had 203 U.S. funds and 227 international ones, serving its 50 million investors. The founder of Vanguard, John Bogle, created an index fund in 1976 known as the Vanguard 500 Index Fund. This is a particular type of fund managed passively. When Bogle invented this index fund, he created a formula to track market returns and invest accordingly. State Street is now owned by Vanguard, but is the second oldest continuously operating bank in the United States. Its predecessor, Union Bank, was founded in 1792. State Street manages $3.9 trillion in investment assets. Along with Vanguard and BlackRock, it is one of the top three index fund managers dominating corporate America. Fidelity Investments manages $4.3 trillion in assets. It was founded by Edward Johnson in 1946 and has remained a family business ever since. Fidelity was the first major U.S. financial firm to market global mutual funds through mail and door-to-door -door sales. Before that, the very idea of investing was exclusive to millionaires. But the success of these companies was not just innovation. Let's start with what these companies say they do. Each helps ordinary people like you and me invest their money. This means they have contributed to democratizing investment. Often, investing with them may seem like a good idea, especially lately. Because in today's world, we're not just concerned with making money, but with making money and contributing to society's advancement. That's where ESG investment comes into play, known in Spanish as environmental and social governance. This is a type of investment that takes social and environmental factors into account. So you'd think they're doing something for the planet, right? Some people have mocked these companies' stance, calling it hypocritical investment. In response to these accusations, companies like BlackRock have argued that it's not hypocrisy, it's capitalism. In their view, climate change poses a risk, so investing in companies that foster the effects of climate change is also a risk. On the other hand, investing in companies that try to mitigate that risk is good business. To give them all the credit, they have put their money where their mouth is. In the year of its creation, Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street 
managed to shake up ExxonMobil's board by installing new members who promised to tackle climate change. BlackRock allowed the state of Virginia, a major coal producer, to withdraw from the investment firm due to its commitment to investing in zero-emission companies. But when you pull back the curtain, it's not as healthy as it seems because these companies are masters of deceit. Vanguard praises investment in green companies while holding $86 billion in coal companies, making it the world's largest investor in this sector. BlackRock, for its part, is the largest investor in fossil fuels and deforestation and profits from doing business with human rights violators. Just look at the deal between BlackRock and the Chinese government. The company became the first to gain access to China's vast mutual fund market, followed by Fidelity. This left many skeptics wondering, what did they promise President Xi Jinping? With this deal, these two companies will inject more and more money into Chinese companies, mainly controlled by the Chinese government. Even more controversial are these companies' investments in Russia. They all had assets invested in Russia, and once the war in Ukraine broke out, they responded, at least publicly, by freezing investments or pulling out completely. It's unclear if those assets will remain out of Russia. In any case, years of investments undoubtedly helped finance the invasion of Ukraine. No matter how you look at it, these companies are plagued by conflicts of interest. In Ukraine, BlackRock is one of the leaders trying to advise the country on rebuilding once the conflict is resolved. It seems like a benevolent act, but it's not. In reality, BlackRock is capitalizing on a war that its funds helped finance to make more money by being one of the pioneers of the new Ukraine. The case of Fidelity is another great deception. The Johnson family, which founded and runs Fidelity, also runs a venture capital arm that competes with Fidelity's investments, meaning the family benefits, while Fidelity investors lose out. For example, since Fidelity's creation, F Capital, the family's venture capital arm, invested $11 million in Ultragenics Pharmaceutical Inc. before it went public. This investment prevented Fidelity funds from making the same move, because if they had, they would have violated U.S. laws. Thus, the family-owned fund got the best stock price, while public funds that invested in the company at a higher price were disadvantaged. In essence, these companies tell one version of their business to the world, but the reality is much more complex and problematic. None of their successes would have been possible without the various patented technologies they developed in their investment strategies. The best example is BlackRock's Aladdin, which introduced the trend of using technology to minimize investment risk. It manages $20 trillion in assets and predicts the outcome of each investment. At the same time, it obtains and sells the personal data of everyone who, knowingly or unknowingly, entrusts their money to BlackRock. This technology and others like it have helped reduce investment management costs and improve returns. This way, BlackRock and other giants have the advantage. They apply their strategy across the company, allowing a few investors to diversify their portfolios and multiply their gains a thousandfold. Technologies like this democratize investment, allowing anyone, regardless of wealth, to invest. That's why over 80% of all assets invested in the last decade have gone to these four companies. If these companies continue revolutionizing with their technologies and controlling more and more investor assets, we risk a concentration of ownership. If these four giants continue increasing their influence over large companies in all sectors, competition will only decrease. They will compete with themselves, which is not competing at all. This leads to fewer choices for consumers and higher prices, a situation we are already experiencing with the airline industry. In the past 14 years, airfares have increased by up to 7% because there are fewer competitors. BlackRock and Vanguard are among the top five shareholders of the three largest operators. But it's not just about the companies. It's about the people who run them, those who make the decisions, pull the strings, and wield power you can't even fathom. Larry Fink, founder, chairman, and CEO of BlackRock, is one of them. He started at a New York investment bank, where he rose to lead the firm's bond department. His career nearly ended after losing $100 million, following an incorrect interest rate prediction. This led him to focus on risk management investment, and thus, BlackRock was born. He founded the firm and grew it from five to eight billion in just five years. Abigail Johnson, CEO of Fidelity Investments, didn't build the company she runs from scratch, but she is the granddaughter of Fidelity's second founder, Edward Johnson. She started as an analyst and portfolio manager before being promoted in the early 2000s. Like an episode of Succession, Johnson unsuccessfully tried to oust her father as CEO. However, her time soon came as she was named CEO in 2014. 
State Street CEO Ronald O'Hanley is linked to Fidelity. He was president of asset management and corporate services before taking his current role. The financial world is much more interconnected than you think. Uniquely, Vanguard is owned by its clients. Its chairman and CEO started his career as an assistant to the company's founder, John Bogle. Bogle has warned about the concentration of ownership, saying there's too much money in too few hands. Asset management has certainly made Mr. Bogle a billionaire, but perhaps he sees beyond that. Maybe he understands the power he and others like him have over every industry they invest in and every investor who trusts them. Or maybe he's sending a warning to the rest of the world, but it's likely there's nothing we can do about it. Because these four companies control the planet. A global financial system meant to empower individual investors has given power to a select few. So, while we get distracted by celebrity faces on magazine covers and mass, generic social media posts, these business leaders are behind the scenes, pulling the levers and secretly deciding the financial future of our world, whether we like it or not. The worst of them all is BlackRock. 